Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today it involves a double rainbow, a geranium as big as a house, a woman who is just towering over a town like she owns it, and a guy sticking his finger in somebody's ear. And you might be wondering, what on earth does all this have to do with each other? Well, these are all things that I'm doing in an image transfer, and I'm going to be doing an image transfer onto an old vintage photo. So here's this guy sitting here enjoying his day, and I'm gonna come along with this image, and I am gonna transfer it right onto there. Now, why exactly do I have his finger going in his ear? Because I was feeling silly. And everything we do doesn't have to have a big significant reason. It can be just because it's fun or the idea kind of crossed your mind. Now the image that I'm using, it was created by Songbirdie. It's a digital image and it was something I bought at a place called Mischief Circus. And unfortunately they are no longer um, in business. They've retired. I don't know where Songbirdie went if they're still selling their kits somewhere. So Songbirdie, if you hear and see this video, please let me know where people can get a hold of your stuff because I think they're fun and wonderful. So let me know and I'll add that down there in the description when I find out where Songbirdie is. Now comes the hardest part of this process and that is awaiting the two minutes. And I'm terrible at judging time, so I always set a timer to remind me when about two minutes are up. So what exactly is it on that foam brush? Well, it's something called the transferase solution. And you create that using the InkAid transferase concentrate and you mix it with 91% isopropyl alcohol. And how you go about doing this, how long it lasts, I mean, all those kind of questions that you might have about getting started with image transfers, I've got all that for you in a video I did earlier and I'll have a link down below for you so you can check that out if you wanna know more about the image transfer process. So now the two minutes are up so I can peel up that transfer film and leave the image behind. And if you're wondering if it has to be exactly two minutes to the second, no. If it's two and a half minutes, if it's three minutes, you just wanna do it while the transfer solution that's on there is juicy. You don't want anything to dry on there because if it does dry all the way on there, it will basically make everything stick and you won't get a good transfer with it. I had so much fun doing this one. I started digging through my vintage photos and I started looking for other ones to use. And one of the things that I really love about this is I can use photos that say aren't my favorite or the best in terms of like interesting people, what I'm often looking for in a vintage photo. These are the ones that have a bunch of empty space. It's kind of a picture that I'm sure it was very important to whoever took it. It had a lot of meaning, but I have no idea even where this city is or what the reason or the story is behind what they took it. So that means I can create my own story for it. Now I will say that the ink aid process for doing image transfers can be very forgiving. You don't have to be super exact and precise, or you can be. So as I was putting the solution on there, I did it one way and I thought, well, maybe I don't quite have enough. So I came in and put a little bit more on. The trick with this is to get enough, but not too much, but also know that it is very forgiving. After you do a couple of these, you really do get a feel for it. You can press it down using your hands or a brayer. My preference is to use a brayer because sometimes I use just a little too much strength, too much pressure when I'm just doing my hands. So that's why you'll see me use a brayer. Now, the hard part for me is that two minute wait to let all the transferee solution do its magic. Now you might be wondering why I put that solution all over the whole photo when it was just her that I wanted to transfer. Well, by going out farther than what I need, I'm positive that I've got good coverage where I do want it. One of the questions that I've been asked about the InkAid image transfers is once you lift up that transfer film and it's all dry, will it be glossy? And the answer to that is yes, it will have some gloss to it. This image was designed by Idkupili. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I will have a link below to their Etsy shop for you. Now on this photo, I'm gonna do two image transfers on it. I'm basically gonna do a transfer on top of a transfer a little bit. And you might be thinking, Carolyn, if you just printed it all out together, it could be one image that you're putting down if I'd already positioned everything. Except these are coming from the little bits, the areas of the transfer film when I'm printing it. Let's say I'm doing something larger or something I'm specifically doing. I will throw any image that I've got that I like on there somewhere and that way every little bit of that transfer film gets used. And because I've got these little remnants, these oddballs floating around, ideas start to come to me that I wouldn't have had if they weren't floating around. Once I've got it positioned there on that transfer solution, then I'm just gonna gently press it down using a very, very, very light touch with that brayer. 
And then it's the waiting. Those are long two minutes. And I have to tell you, this process has made it very clear to me. I have no sense of time. 20 seconds, two minutes. I would tell you they were all about the same when I'm waiting. And of course, if I get distracted and I come back 20 minutes later, it's like, oh, was that more than two minutes? So that is why I really lean on that phone to tell me when those two minutes are up. All right, so I've got the geranium on there, that giant towering geranium, and now it's time to put the grass on there. When I am my wise self, I know that it is best to wait for everything to be dry before you go on to the next step. But I'm feeling playful, not wise, and I'm feeling impatient, so I'm just gonna keep right on going. What I'm doing is trimming down the transfer film so that when I place this down there, none of that film is gonna be touching any of the stem of the geranium. Because since I didn't wait for everything to dry, I kinda wonder if I put more transfer film on top of it now while it's wet, it might pull up part of that stem. And I don't want that. So that's why I cut that little notch out of that transfer film. Both of these images were created by Hollywood Studios, who was the founder of Mischief Circus, and unfortunately she has retired. But any kind of digital image that you've got, you can print out on a piece of the transfer film. And if you're interested in getting some free images that you can use to do image transfers, I've got a whole page of them for you. I created those so that you'd have a place to start if you wanted to give image transfers a try. I've got a link down below for how you can get that emailed over to you. All right, so this stuff has waited the two minutes, so now I'm just gonna peel that transfer film up if I can decide which end I wanna do it at. Oh, and by the way, the green grass that is not being put on the photo that you can still see is on the transfer film, you bet I can use that on something else. So I am gonna save that little bit. I use all of the little pieces and parts that get used somewhere. Oh, and by the way, I'm not trying to be a tease here as I'm lifting up that plastic. It really is best to lift it up slowly if you yank on it really hard or really fast, you may find that your image doesn't lay down as well. So you do wanna pull it up very gently as you go. Now, let's say you're really impatient, like me, and you don't wanna wait two minutes between each and every transfer. Then you can do several of them at once. So as I'm doing these two rainbows here, the double rainbow, I'm actually only gonna to have to wait two minutes once because I'm doing them at about the same time. Now you might wonder, how am I gonna know exactly, if I'm only setting the timer once, how am I gonna know exactly when to lift each one so that it is exactly two minutes? Well, that's the thing. It doesn't have to be exactly two minutes. Whether it's two minutes and 15 seconds, whether it's a minute and 55 seconds, uh, that is no big deal. And I will confess, I have even say done more than two minutes because I didn't set a timer and it still worked. What I will say though, is if you only give it about 10, 15 seconds, that's not enough time for it to do it consistently. And I tend to think of 15 seconds as two minutes, which is why I need that clock to tell me to, whoa, hang in there and wait those magical two minutes. Now, thanks to technology, I had to wait, but you didn't have to, so it has been those two minutes, and now I am ready to lift up that transfer film and reveal the rainbow that is now transferred onto that vintage photo. So you might be wondering, once you've got these, what do you do with them? Oh, well, you can do anything you want with them. For me, this is fodder. This is ephemera that I can use in my art journal. I can use in a collage. I might put together a quick card for a friend. I could put it in a scrapbook. Anything that I'm creating, these are pieces that I can incorporate into it now. If you've got questions about the InkAid image transfer process, I've got a video that I'll have linked down below for you where I go in depth with everything you need to know to get started giving these things a try. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, if you had fun, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you want more fun, more play, then hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new video out. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.